In this video, I will show you everything you need to know about VIP and NAN outbound calling. I'm going to go over what outbound calling is, walk you through what I consider to be its four different levels, as well as give you four blueprints that you can start using for yourself today. So without any further delay, let's not waste any time and get straight into the video. So first of all, for those of you who aren't familiar with outbound calling, VATI, or both of them, let's just go ahead and check out the documentation really quickly so you can get an understanding of what it does, some of the use cases that this is practical for, and how you can use it for yourself. So in essence, as you can see here, outbound calling is something that allows you to perform single or batch calls to really any phone numbers. And so BATPI's API allows you to do this and go ahead and really customize this as you're able to schedule calls for specific dates and times, personalize calling for every person using a platform like NAN or maybe make.com. And then over here, if we go ahead to the API reference, we can go ahead and see that we have multiple categories of things that we can do. Over here is the calls category. So as you can see here, we have around five options for the things that we can do. We can go ahead and list calls, for example, create calls, which is just placing the calls deleting call data, and other things. So for the sake of this video, we're going to be using the two most important endpoints. We're going to be using the create call action as well as the get call action because this will allow us to place calls as well as retrieve all of the information that went on during those calls. And if all of this seems like it's complicated, let's go ahead inside of NAM and let me show you how simple it truly is for anyone to get this set up. So before we get into NAN and actually performing those outbound calls, let's go ahead inside of VAPI and let me explain how some of this will actually work. So on a high level, inside of VAPI, you can create the outbound assistance pretty much exactly as you would regularly by clicking on create assistant, giving it a system prompt, and then going ahead and using it. But the question is, how do you actually get it inside of NAN and how can you use it to place calls outside of your dashboard? That's what we're going to be setting up right now. So if you're signed into VAPI, perfect. But if you want to sign up, you can actually sign up using the link I provided in the description to get your first 10 credits for free. Anyway, once you're inside of VAPI, you can go ahead and create an assistant, pretty much feed in any system prompt you would like the assistant to follow. In this case, I just made myself a personal assistant that's going to be reaching out and getting people to book quick meetings with me. So once you've got your assistant's instructions, personality, and voice all customized, you can go ahead to the left-hand side and click on this section called API keys. You can go ahead, click on these API keys, and over here, you're going to see a private API key. So you're going to go ahead, you're going to click on this ID. Essentially, what it's doing is just copying our API key, nothing more, which we're going to use to show that be that the assistants we're accessing in NAN are being accessed with permission. So over here, once you've got that API key copied, you can go ahead inside of your NAN. Once again, if you haven't signed up for this yet, I've dropped the link in the description. You're going to be able to get two weeks of NAN completely for free. And by the way, to access the exact same blueprints of the four levels that I've dropped in here, you're going to go ahead and join my free school community where I'm going to be including all of the resources I mentioned inside of this video and more than 30 other voice agent templates completely for free. What you're simply going to do is you're going to download one of those templates. You're going to click on these three dots and then you're going to click on import from file. After you import from file, you should get pretty much the exact same screen that you see over here with all of the levels that we're shortly going to go over. As I just mentioned, we copied this private key in order to use it inside of NAN. So in this first node that you see over here, which is going to be named place call, just click inside of it. And over here, you're going to see something called authentication. What you're going to do is out of all of these three options, you're going to click on generic credential type. From there, you're going to go ahead and click on bear auth, which is going to be the second option from the top. And then you're going to go ahead and create a new credential. All you're going to do is paste in the exact same API key you just got from VAPI inside of here. Name it something like my VAPI API key and then click on save. From there, you've set this up. Once is enough. And from here, we're good to continue. So as you can see here, the first level is just a simple manual outbound calling setup. We have only two nodes. We have a manual click as well as a place call node. And over here, if you go inside of the same place call node and scroll down, you'll see a space called content type. So this body content type is actually what allows us to perform the same call. Over here, we would specify the ID of the system that we're using to call the person, the ID of our phone number that we're using, as well as provide the person's phone number and their name. So in order to set this up, you're going to go back to VAPI. You're going to click copy assistant ID for the assistant you just recently created. And then you're going to go ahead and replace my assistant ID with yours. Now for the phone number ID, the phone number ID is a bit different because it depends on where you live. So if you're in the US, VAPI actually offers you the option to get 10 free American phone numbers to use for yourself. 
The issue with this, though, is that if you don't live in the U.S., these numbers will not work on non-American phone numbers, and they're going to give you an error. So there are multiple other ways to go about this. In my experience, you can go ahead and create a free American phone number with a Google Voice, or you can go ahead and click on Create Phone Number over here, and then you would import a Twilio number. You would have to buy this Twilio number on Twilio. It costs around $2 per month, but you would import it inside of here, and from there you would be able to place calls exactly the same way. So either way, once you have a phone number imported inside of Appy, you're going to go ahead to the top right over here, copy the phone number ID, and then once again, replace my phone number ID with yours. From there, you can add a phone number. Just keep in mind that it needs to be in the correct format. So if you're calling an American phone number, you're going to have to include plus one before it, and then the full 10-digit phone number after that. So once you've gotten the first level set up, you can go ahead and try it out by clicking on execute workflow and seeing if you get a call to your number. Next up, we can go ahead and move on to level two. So over here, instead of having a simple two module blueprint, we're moving on to something that has four modules. As you can see here, this is scheduled outbound calling. So this node over here in NAN is known as a scheduled trigger node. You can set it up to call people at regular intervals, as I have it over here, to call every day at 8 a.m. The next node would be exactly the same as in this one, but after that, we're adding two more nodes. Outbound calling by itself is pretty good, don't get me wrong, but what is the purpose of performing those calls if you don't even get to see what happens during them? That's why over here we have a setup that allows you to wait 5 minutes after the call is made, and if the call by that time finishes, you're going to go ahead and get the call details. This node over here, which we're going to pretty much set up the exact same way, will require the same authentication you set up before, and there will be a slight difference in the link that we're using, but otherwise it's going to be exactly the same. And to show you actually how it works, just a few seconds ago, what it did is it waited for that time, and then it went ahead and retrieved my call details. So if I go inside of this get call node, I will see that it retrieved a bunch of details from my call. So over here we have the transcript, it said, Hello, this is Daniel, Azim's personal assistant. Do you have a few minutes to spare for me? I declined it, I said no, bye bye. And then it told me to have a great rest of my day. So that's pretty straightforward. It just outputted the exact transcript. And then after that, it also outputted a summary, which is really helpful as I will explain in the next few minutes. But overall, just with this simple addition, we're not only able to place the call, but we're able to retrieve the full transcript of the conversation, as well as the summary. And as you can see here, it says that the type was an outbound phone call. Next up, we're going to be moving on to level 3, which is web hook trigger calling. For those of you who are a bit more technically advanced, you'll know exactly what a web hook is. It's something that I always love to say, you literally hook into the web, for example in the software that you're using, and whenever an important action happens, so let's say a lead fills out a form, or a lead asks for a refund or cancels their membership, information is instantly set to this webhook, and then we can go ahead and initiate an action based off of that. But this isn't something that you have to use a webhook for, you could technically swap this webhook out for another scheduled trigger node, so to call you every day, because as you can see, the webhook is not the only change that we've made in this scenario. In this scenario, we've added something more advanced. So instead of just waiting five minutes and then getting the call details, we're using a much more reliable system because if a call lasts for longer than five minutes, we're not gonna be able to get the full details of the call because we would be retrieving the information in the middle of it. So after placing this call over here, we would go on and wait 30 seconds. After that, we would go ahead and fetch call details. And then over here, we have some more complex routing. So if we go back inside of this get call details node that we had before and scroll down, we can actually go ahead and see the status of every call as well as the reason for which it ended. So we're actually going to be using the same information over here. So if the status tells us that the call is in progress, we're going to go ahead and repeat the cycle of waiting 30 seconds until the call is finally over and it goes ahead to this ended status, after which we can filter the calls again to see if it ended normally, or basically I hung up or the assistant ended the call, or if the call was missed. So let's say we want to track only the calls that were ended normally. We can go ahead and create something like a Google Sheet or an Airtable to actually track the details of this call. So I'm going to include the simple Google Sheet in the description. You can use it for yourself. And what should we do is go ahead and map the variables that we received from the call into this Google Sheet. So for simplicity purposes, let me take this Google Sheet node from here and drag it over to here so that we don't have to perform another, so that I don't have to perform another call and show you how this works. So over here, I can see the details we had before. And as I just said, we can drag the details that we had during the call inside of this Google Sheet. 
So as you'll see here, we can go ahead and map the summary. After that, we can go ahead and map the transcript, the link to the recording of the call, the date at which that call ended, how much money it costs us. So in this case, it was around three cents for around the 20 second call and many other details. So just to show you, if I click on that part, it would go ahead and map the summary of this call, which is this right into my Google Sheet. So I hope by now you can actually see how powerful outbound calls can get. Just from level one, we've jumped from making a manual call to then waiting five minutes and retrieving call details to then making a very flexible system that can fetch calls at the right time and fetch the exact calls that we want, as well as track them inside of a database. So with that, let's go ahead and move on to level four. And before I move on to level four, I just want to clarify a few things about level three. So with something like a webhook trigger, you would have to make sure that the data we're passing can actually be used inside of this request node. So one of the things that often happens is that the phone number gets messed up because some platforms like to use the plus one in front of phone numbers, for example, but others don't. Vapi itself requires you to use the plus one country code and any other details to place the call. So whenever you're passing or loading in or mapping any information to these make call nodes, you just want to make sure that the details you are passing are in the correct format. All right, and finally, let's move on to level four, which is advanced outbound batch calling. Now, I've already ran a test call with the setup just for simplicity reasons. Uh, so now I'm just going to show you how it works, how it gets leads and how it calls them. So as with anything else, this starts with a trigger. It can be a manual click. If you choose so, it can be a schedule trigger, as we saw before, or a webhook, as we see here. And what it does is it starts by getting all of the leads. So it gets all of the leads from our Google Sheet. Over here, uh, my Google Sheet is this one. This is the Google Sheet I was using for the setup. It's pretty simple. It's just my name, um, my phone number, and then my status. So over here, we have a node called loop over items. And so what this does is it limits every batch essentially to one person at a time. So this is actually what allows us to call one person at a time. And over here, we're simply placing the call. We're updating the row using the row number that we got from this first get leads module. And we're updating the status as calling, which means that we're currently calling them. After we do that, we follow this regular setup where we wait 30 seconds, fetch the call details all the way until the call ends normally, at which point we mark the call as completed. Once again, it's the same setup. We just go down here and we mark the call as complete. And finally, after that, we're logging all of these details back into the database of the sheet that we had. So if we go back inside of my sheet over here and click on end of call report, we're going to see that the summary, the transcript, the date and time, and the other details have been mapped inside of our Google Sheet. So if we read the summary, an AI identifying as a Zeem's personal assistant initiated the call. So during the call, I asked it to not call me again. These details are correct. And over here, you can see the time this was initiated, the transcript, and pretty much all of the information that we need to know about a call. And so with that, we have just completed level four of our outbound calling setup. As a reminder, we have went from just a simple manual outbound calling setup. And by the way, I'm missing a trigger node here because you can only have one of these triggers per workflow. So I just dragged it over. But small details aside, we went from a simple setup where we manually placed those calls to a fully dynamic setup where we're actually able to get entire batches of leads and then go through them one by one, track the exact details that we need, as well as track those leads themselves. So anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. Once again, all of the resources will be in my free school community, which you can access using the link in the description, as well as more than 30 other templates I mentioned before. Now, if you're a business owner that's looking to use uh, a similar voice agent setup, whether for outbound calling, appointment booking, sales, or anything else, my agency in Spare actually just opened a few more spots for business owners that are curious about this. So using the calendar I dropped in the description, you can actually go ahead and book a 15 minute free intro chat with me and my team. We will develop a custom roadmap for your business, give you a quick consultation, as well as some advice that you can use to power your business with voice agents. So if you're interested in that, once again, link is going to be in the description. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.